सब्सक्राइब टू आर चैनल एंड प्रेस द बेल आइकॉन टू नेवर मिस एन अपडेट इट्स अ होस्ट ऑफ चैलेंजेस दिस कोविड ब्रिंग्स अबाउट एंड इट विल चेंज द फ्यूचर ऑफ वर्क इट विल चेंज इट पीपल विल रियली थिंक डीपर नाउ Hi guys welcome to the inside i am professor of the year there are a lot of aspects on campuses that get a lot of recognition placements being the top ones but the input the most important input of an mba program is the professor the quality of education that is given on campus and what better campus to start from than i am amdabad to do our first interview we have professor devjit roy thank you sir for doing this uh, welcome to inside i am Uh, it is a privilege to be associated with you as far as the global supply chain is concerned what are some of the things that you see emerging which are never going to go back now we you know that this is one of those black swan events where certain things happen after which uh, you know you don't go back to the old ways at all things change forever so what are some of the things in context of the global supply chain that are going to change forever because of covid 19 any supply chain the biggest delays or the hindrances to any work is the coordination right because mm-hmm. there are so many parties you're working with and uh, coordination delays are humongous um, but today after the covid scenario people uh, truly embrace technology they are really willing to work with technology so the first difference you're going to see which i will not see will die down anytime soon is mm-hmm. people will be more willing to work digitally uh, they will they will i think the demand for uh, papers will definitely come down for sure So in general I would say st- the supply chains will also start questioning about their entire structure. Do we really right. need multiple levels of intermediaries? So today if you see what is happening, the Kirana store is willing to deliver but they are not able to fulfill fill their stocks. Right? right? So if that is the case, the Kirana store will question themselves, right? So new business models will evolve and the supply chain will become more and more shorter. The chain will become shorter in the future, which will not come down otherwise right so now you will see that the supply chain has few layers and uh, it will be more nimble and more robust in their delivery process so everybody is questioning the business model today why are we this way right right uh, and and we we are this way because either we wanted to be cost efficient our business metric was very different we never worried about flexibility we never thought about disruptions but today everybody is questioning the business model is our business ready to handle disruptions that particular right. supply chain is supply chain willing is, is is it enough to absorb the shocks and i see that yeah many many supply chains are not yet ready to handle the shocks and they will requestion themselves right so right. it is very interesting you spoke earlier about gst for instance now that becomes a big problem now in disruption era right what happens in that gst warehouse is situated in mihan in nagpur and enter nagpur is quarantined because of whatever reason while it is improved right. the cost structure of setting up warehouses but now it is less efficient to distribute nobody can get the essential items and and during the disruptions decentralization plays better than centralization so those who thought not only about cost but also thought about disruptions while setting up their entire network design will be more better prepared in the covid and the future era as well Right. So that is right. the biggest change I see is rethinking their whole network. Right. So today, if you think about uh, panic buying, right, a lot of people are hoarding products. So what is the impact of that on the overall supply chain restocking policies? If you talk about warehouse disruptions, well, if the warehouse get disrupted, it typically gets disrupted in a high demand region, and particularly if the density is very high, its chances of infection is also very high. Right. so which warehouse should you use to supply to the customer it's a host of challenges this covid brings about and it will change the future of work it will right. change it, it people will really think deeper now say sir uh, we take amdavad as a city because that's a city you spend some time in in india and uh, you look at the situation right now today uh, essentials are difficult to come by whether it's the mom and pop mom and pop stores or the big chain uh, retail organized retail stores what are the three things that you would recommend we do next time this kind of a situation comes along yeah i think uh, it just came to as a shock this time for us but if we again i'll take back i'll i lean upon my thoughts in the previous question 
if, if any kind of uh, facility has a decentralized kind of network right and uh, second uh, if you have a decentralized network which means you're stocking at different locations and if one center is kind of broken or down because of whatever reason not just really just because of covid the other center is willing to kind of transfer the stock to the customers i think you need more multiple small warehouses at different uh, because the business continuity planning the disruption planning has to be done in place and second i think which may be more of a us problem but also an india problem is that during the disruption certain segment of the workforce uh, gets more job opportunities and certain segment doesn't get so much job opportunities right, right. so for instance right. amazon is hiring 100000 new people during the time of covid the yeah. demand in online platform increased so by 100 to 100% on the other hand restaurants fired all their people right so there's kind of dichotomy here so i think people should also be uh, cross functional so you have to really evaluate more kind of sharing agreements between the workforces maybe the same manufacturing company workers whom who are firing today will be equipped to work in a healthcare environment right so the, so the future will be more about i think cross functional jobs and multifunctional jobs so you will not be just good enough if you're just working in a restaurant you should also be willing to work in a healthcare with good hygiene so i think those kind of labor sharing agreements will be more popular in the future as well and uh, to mitigate the risk i think the government should also think about how should we design the labor sharing agreements so that if one sector there is a problem other sector can absorb the kind of people we are looking for right we talked a lot about how data artificial intelligence based on data autonomous vehicles all these larger trends are going to disrupt supply chains especially because of covid what is going to these changes are going to get more accelerated as you were mentioning that's going to have an impact on the job market as well so apart from having optionality in terms of what careers you can pursue it's also going to cut down on jobs uh, these kinds of tech interventions very interesting and especially in a labor intensive uh, country like india that's going to have a massive impact so uh, yeah yeah you you it's so very, very true very true in fact you know what today if you see the disruption is least in automated warehouses disruption least in warehouses where there are few people right because yeah the robots don't get flu <laughs> so they can work they, they can work continuously without any disruptions so that is actually also a foresight right so we have been argued for last 20 years i've been hearing in india the labor cost is low that's the answer for any kind of decision yes you want you do not want to invest in any technology because labor cost is low so i think in in future i would not think the robots will take away completely job of the humans Uh, the robots are going to collaborate more with humans in variety of different formats uh, today you already have chatbots for the service sectors and all which are already mini robots doing some work for you but i say in the future um, robots will do the less intelligent mundane task and the human right. will do more intelligent uh, variety of task and robot will always collaborate with human pickers so if you have to prepare for the future uh you have to think about how can we worked or how can we educate myself on say machine to machine intelligence uh right. how do i really think about leveraging automation into the mundane task or how do i use leverage leverage automation or ai or machine learning in doing my task better there is no second option here to completely exclude robotics or ai or any kind of machine intelligence its only thing is that the courses should be designed uh, by taking to account that yes this is the future we know that the jobs will be not completely done by human beings how can human beings leverage technology to efficiently task do their task and how they can be more nimble and flexible today right. they have taught about this technology forgiving to the past and willing to take up a uh, new kind of context new programming languages new kind of tools so i think we should have a course how to continually learn in our future right right because learning will never stop and i think more importantly in the future generations they should be taught about how to keep on continuously learning and upgrading yourself there is another shock which is upcoming when the covid problem dies down 
then the, uh, there is going to be an explosion of demand as well in terms of people wanting a lot of things and it'll, it is going to be a shock to the system as well so how do you think uh, is the best way to handle that shock to the supply chain which may come maybe hopefully in a month's time or may, worst case in three months time yeah it is interesting i think i'm already saying i was trying to just try out with the one of the apps today and i was saying that the delivery slots are already full and they're not yeah. accepting new orders so right. i think it is a self correcting mechanism right so online channel will not have a problem because they will just delay the delivery slots or they will push the demand to another segment so i don't see that much of a problem in that segment uh, and particularly right. i would say they are the ones who are least disrupted because they have less layers in the supply chain so right. so I, i do not imagine too much of a problem with the online players i can imagine much more problems with the supply chain which has many layers like the pharma uh, or the uh, or the traditional kirana stores the right. traditional grocery stores so they will have some challenge initially with the stocks a lot of people who would have who used to frequent kirana stores will now shift to e-commerce and will never go back even when things ease out and that's what we're right. talking about digital transformation right yeah. so that is one way so we'll we'll go digital and we'll embrace digital we will learn the value to go digital and right. that will that will stay on from now on the the efficiencies in supply chain will dramatically improve sir there is a certain bias towards the extrovert in the way uh, selection procedure works in b schools how you interact in that interview matters a lot in whether you get selected or not but if you want to do well in operations and supply chain communication is not a very important skill compared to say knowing num- knowing your numbers and you know understanding the underlying logic of things do you feel that we have the best selection procedure in place uh, for specifically ops and supply chain professionals uh, coming out of b schools i think but many b schools including ima has moved out from gd and we are focusing more on analytical ability right, right. so gd is no longer used in our uh, selection mechanism uh, we focus so more that's the reason why gd has been removed because you want more yeah of- your communication ability doesn't matter so much i would say it does matter okay uh, because at the end uh, numbers are just numbers and you need to convince this to your management and to your peers or to your subordinates that this is indeed a problem and uh, the communication the change management is a critical piece which can influence the success of a project one thing i would stress is that uh, i try to uh, become a good public speaker because mm. you have to convince large audience unfamiliar audience sometimes you have to deal with different stakeholders sometimes you have to convince a organization which is completely maybe association based sometimes right. you have to convince the unions so it is not just playing with numbers but equally well how do you present your numbers right so i think communication is really important even for ops person so ops will be equal to logistics in the future because inefficiencies in logistics are tremendous and every uh, ops position will circle around one or two of logistics features so if you are in a job to eliminate one or two inefficiencies you're already set